Hello everyone, I'm Andrew, and today I would like to teach you how to find the dimensions of a right cylinder if you know that the height of that right cylinder is one less than one half the radius. What does that mean? I'm going to have to read that like four times over. I just read it for the first time now and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Um, right. All right. So I'll come back. And the volume is going to be 72 pi cubic meters. Did you have the same thing happen to you where you like read and this and you got like halfway like right there and you're like, uh, your brain just shuts off? Yeah, you're not alone. You're not alone. So let, let's, so whenever that happens, go back, take your time, and just take it piece by piece. Okay? So it says the height is one less than. Well, one what? One millimeter, one micrometer, right? First of all, that's a problem. It should be one meter, all right? Uh, because I have to make that assumption, right? If this is in cubic meters, I'm assuming that they're talking about meters. But let's just say the height is going to be one meter less than one half of the radius so first thing is just kind of reread that maybe one or two more times all right this is the radius and this will represent the height so let's think about what's going on so first of all they're talking about something something about half the radius right they're talking about half the radius so if the radius you call r then half of the radius has to be r over two right this would be half of the radius so this mathematical symbol represents this part of that mathematical statement, okay? Let me just put that in a slightly different color, just so that it might be easier to uh, to track, all right? So let's just do r over 2, and that's one half the radius. Now it says the height is. So it says height is. In other words, height equals one meter less than, okay? So one meter less than what? Well, one meter less than one half the radius. So this is one half the radius, r over two, and the height should be one meter less than this. So in other words, you have to subtract one from it, right? If this is half the radius and you subtract one from it, isn't that the same thing as saying one less than one half the radius, right? So this is what the height is equal to, all right? That's the height. Now, what I'm gonna do is because I want to have both of these now radius and height in terms of the same variable. I don't want an R here and I don't want an H here. What I'm going to do is because I know what H is equal to, meaning it's equal to R over 2 minus 1, I'm going to just substitute that now, right? Because I know that the height is equivalent to that. So what that now allows me to do, so R over 2 minus 1, what that allows me to do, and you will see once I create my formula here, it allows me to calculate stuff. So the last piece of information is it tells us that the volume is going to be 72 pi cubic meters. So somehow the volume has to be related to the height and the width, you know, somehow. So how is that, you know, how, uh, did I say height and the width? I meant the height and the radius. Sorry, uh, we're not dealing with a two-dimensional uh, box. So the volume of a right circular cylinder is going to be equal to pi times the radius squared times height. So the volume they told us is going to be 72 pi. That's going to equal pi times the radius squared, which you defined as just r, times then the height. Well, the height is now r over 2 minus 1. Now you can simplify this a little bit. Get rid of the pi's, not the 2. So it's going to be equal to 72 times now r squared times r over 2 minus 1. All right, and now from here, what you can do is you can kind of use a couple of mathematical techniques, and it's going to take you a while to get this problem done. Um, instead, we're going to use a calculator. I highly doubt that you're not going to have a calculator here to solve this problem. But if you don't, what you would do is factor this, basically, not, not factor it. Um, what you would want to do is uh, set this equal to zero. That's what I'm going to do anyway right now. So let me just do that. So zero is going to be equal to r squared times r over 2 minus 1 minus 72. And then what you'd have to do is distribute this, all right? You're going to get like a cubic function. And from that, you're going to have to use the rational zero theorem, all right, to help you out. So if you want to know how to do that without a calculator, uh, check out just Google Blazor Tutoring, rational zero theorem, and uh, the videos will come up, tons of them, all right? Um, and just watch it, and I'll walk you through step by step of how to do it. But you'll see, <laughs> after you watch it, you'll see why uh, I highly suggest you watch it, but you'll understand why you don't want to do it this way, because uh, it's going to take you an hour and a half. Um, so instead, what we're going to do, we're just going to stop it at this point. Actually, we're just going to stop the video. Thanks for tuning in. And no, I'm kidding. 
Just kidding. Don't throw your computer across the room. I got you covered. Don't worry. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this part. All right. And we're going to plug it into the calculator. So remember, first you got to set it equal to zero. Now I'm going to use X instead of R because that's just the variable here. So it's X squared parentheses. Then we're going to do X over two X divided by two. Okay. Minus one close the parentheses minus then 72. All right. And what you're going to do is you're going to hit graph. Now, what you're going to see happen is that this crosses the x-axis and the location, the value of x, in other words, where this crosses the x-axis is your solution. All right. Is the solution. So we can just see from the picture, this one, two, three, four, five, it looks like six, right? So if you were to plug in six for R and you calculate it out, what you're going to find is that this whole thing goes to zero. In other words, six is a solution to this equation. So whenever you set something equal, so this is the, this is the fact whenever, well, this is the fact, or this is a fact. This is a fact. When you set an equation equal to zero and you graph the other side, whatever the X intercept is, is a solution for the variable. Okay. So, you know, what you can do though, in the calculator, you can go second calc, scroll down to zero. All right, hit enter, and you're going to use this kind of function. So you got to go to the left bound of the point. So just move the cursor. You know, it's going to be about six. So just keep clicking over until you get close to six. Not, not crazy. Like that's fine. Just under five is good. Then click over. You're going to go to the right bound, right? That's fine. Go somewhere over six. I don't know. Somewhere seven. That's fine. And then you're going to guess, just get it close enough. You don't have to be exact. Watch 6.21. Watch if I hit enter, boom, you see it calculates it right there. All right. So it told us that X or in our case, R is going to be equal to six. So again, if you plug in six in the equation above, you're going to get a value of zero. So I know that that's an answer. So I know the radius. That's what I found. The radius is six. Now if the radius is six and the height is one less than half of the radius, what is then the height it would be six over two, which is three minus one, which would be a value of two. So radius is six, height is two. You can just double check yourself again. You know, the volume is going to be equal to pi times the value of the radius squared times then the height. So this works out to be 36 times two, which is the same thing as 72 pi. And that's what they said it should be. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this video helps. And if it does, if you can like subscribe, tell your friends, we try to go through painstakingly uh, exhaustive detail here to try and show you how to approach problems. And we have thousands of videos out there. So I basically guarantee that if you watch the channel, uh, you're probably going to wind up doing well in the class, but you should be trying to perform the problems first and then using our videos as a guide if you're having a little bit of trouble. All right. Like I said, we have thousands of solved solutions out there in mathematics, physics, and chemistry. This is absolutely the best way to do well on your exams. You don't just want to read notes and memorize stuff. It's terrible, especially for these sciences. You have to do active practice. All right. So get the problems, download those OpenStax books and do the problems. If you have trouble, we got you back. Watch the videos. You're going to see your grades go from it. Definitely, definitely. You're going to see them increase, but you got to practice by the way. Okay. You got to practice. Keep going. We believe in you. All right. Keep going. We got your back. We'll talk to you soon. Well, I don't know if we will. Well, I'll talk to you. Well, I will talk to you, right? I am talking to you, but you're not talking. I mean, you could leave us a comment. You'll leave us a comment. That way we can have a dialogue. Anyway, enough rambling. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm a little lonely. Not really sure. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I um, see when you talk to a computer for most of the day, you start to, I don't know, go a little crazy. So anyway, drop us a line. Say hi. Okay, I'm done. Am I done? I'm done.